that we spend in God's Word that you will be alert because it is a good time uh, when we can spend time, you know, together in worship and in God's Word. So, you know, do what you got to do to kind of like wake your brains up a little bit, what you got to do to kind of just like focus your heart and just center yourself on, you know, what is God saying to you today, right? What is God bringing you here for? Where, where is God leading you as you move forward from? You know, this service as we go off into our lives. And so, you know, do what you got to do to kind of like center your brains and your hearts and your minds around that. Uh, before we get into today's service, we are going to just enter into a time of prayer together. Uh, we've been praying consistently uh, for the past few months for uh, one brother uh, in our fellowship, Galen, who was diagnosed with lymphoma earlier this year. Uh, praise God that the doctors, his doctors have now... Uh, said that he is in uh, remission, so there are no active cancer cells in his body at this time, but he's still undergoing this last bit of treatment, um, and so we're actually praying specifically that there's, because right now there's a high chance that his thyroid will be uh, kind of destroyed through the, the radiation treatment that he's going through, and so we're praying that, you know, that, that it would be strong enough to survive, uh, that he would be able to have it functioning uh, for him. So why don't we just enter into prayer, and we're going to pray for Galen and Michelle together. So Father God, Lord, we just come before you on behalf of our brother and our sister, Lord, Galen and Michelle. So Father God, you have uh, just brought them through such a journey, Lord, over these past seven months, eight months, Lord. Uh, we thank you first for your faithfulness to them. Lord, we thank you that they have a testimony of, of faith, of holding on, of also Experiencing you in the midst of a really difficult time, in the midst of a lot of fear and doubt and uncertainty. So we thank you for that, Father God, and we would just want to continue praying for Galen, uh, for his physical healing, Lord. We pray just as he's undergoing this uh, last month of radiation treatment, Lord, that, Lord, that you would protect uh, his thyroid, Lord, that you would just let it survive or let it be strong enough to uh, get through this treatment time. Father God, we pray for just a quick recovery for Galen. Lord, and that, that both him and Michelle will be able to rejoin us soon, uh, shortly, Lord, and we can celebrate um, and fellowship together and just uh, and love on him in, in the way that you love on him, Father God. And we just come before you humbly asking, Father, for we know that in you holds the power of life, uh, and healing, and salvation. If you've ever gone to a bonfire before, you know, um, we go to the bonfires at the beach every once in a while, and what you do is at the end of, you know, your fire, you have to put out your fire, right? And so, like, people, like, scoop sand and, and whatever, you know, in there. And actually, there's sometimes if you go early enough in the morning, you know, because sometimes you have to go really early to reserve a pit, and you'll see, like, these embers, right, like, that, they're, that are still there, they're, like, half buried by the sand, and they're still warm. And they're still hot. And actually, you know, if you could, you could probably just kind of gather them all together, right? And, you know, if they're still glowing, right, just add a little bit of tinder and you blow. And there's a good chance that you'll get a flame. There's right? just something about it when you just gather it together, right, all of that heat just comes in, right, and you can just reignite something. You know, when we're talking about spiritual disciplines, as we're doing this process um, or the sermon series on spiritual disciplines, I want to liken, you know, our, our, our engaging in, in these spiritual disciplines, our engaging in, you know, God's word and prayer and fasting and meditation. It's like gathering the embers together, right? It's about putting ourselves in a position, in a place where God, you know, can kind of reignite something, where God can, you know, set, you know, and he could do it with one ember or not, but we're just placing ourselves, it's our willing submission, it's our willing offering, right, to say, hey, God, you know, as I engage in these things, as I seek you, you know, in prayer, in meditation, in your word, in all of these disciplines, you know, we are placing ourselves in a position Right, for God to 
used to God, for God to kind of set a flame, for God to ignite something within ourselves. And I just want to encourage you guys, I want to encourage all of us, you know, and I'll talk a little more at the end of the passage, or at the end of this message, but, but, but I want to encourage you guys to really seek deeply how to engage, you know, with God. Like I've been saying, and I use this word a lot, you know, the spiritual disciplines aren't a checklist of things to do to say that you're a good Christian. But they are the way and the manner in which we cooperate with what God is doing in our lives and through our lives. Like if we want to know, if we want to see what God is doing that they're, you know, spiritually around us, then we engage in these disciplines so that we can see that. And he's doing stuff through you for the benefit of those around you, your community, your co-workers, your friends, your families. And he is doing things in you. And mostly what he's doing in us is transformation. Right? It's a transforming work. And the study and, and today's discipline of, of studying scripture, I just want to share with you this you know, studying scripture or dedication to studying the Bible is the launch pad for just this beautiful transformation, right, to be more like Christ. If we want to continue and further the work that God is doing in us, sorry, in us, right, then studying scripture is kind of a beginning point for all of that. It's a launch pad. Romans 12, 2, it says this, do not, conform, uh, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. The beginning place of transformation starts in our brains. It starts in how we think, it starts in what we think about, and studying the scripture is opening ourselves to understanding what God's truth is so that our minds could be changed, that our minds could be transformed. And so this is kind of the beginning. It's not the full process, right? It's not the full process, but this is a beginning point to the transformation of ourselves is in the scripture, is in studying God's word. If we're never challenged by thoughts outside of what we generate in our own heads, then we're not changing, right? But, but opening yourself up to seeing what God says about something, to see his truth and starting to, to start to accept it first in your mind, right? That's, that's the launch pad, that's the doorway to, to real transformation, which is, the end goal, right, or the goal of, of all, all believers. You know, they say that this is the information age, right? We are inundated, inundated with information. I can't tell you, I probably read about seven to ten just articles, right, at least a day online, right? I read about you know, someone will post, Paul posted something about it costs more money to send text messages than it does, you know, to send information to Mars, right, apparently, you know, according to NASA or whatever, right? And I was like reading that, I was like, oh, that's so interesting, you know, like Daniel will post something about politics, right? And I'll read an article, you know, and I'll be like, that's interesting. Someone will post about the lottery, right, and I'll read that article. And I've, we're just inundated with so much information, right? We watch YouTube videos of people talking about other stuff that's going on, right? We have people that are into video games watch YouTube videos about some which are some, which is someone talking about other people playing video games, right? We've got I've, we have a youth. I remember I was talking to James earlier, and he was like, "Yeah, we just did a podcast, right? We did a podcast on like these video games, right? Like him and his friends." I was like, "Whoa." You know, there's just all this information that is out there, right? And we are studying all the time, right? We're studying all the time. I see people, if you are taking your SATs, you got your flashcards out, right? You've got different things, you know, Daniel's in seminary right now, 
around. He's, you know, every once in a while I'll see him with his Greek vocabulary on his phone, right? For work you're studying for stuff, you know, you might have some tests, you might have some things, and there's so much information. And I was thinking about this the other week, and I was like, you know, if I think back, and you guys can think back, think back to the maybe times in your life where you studied the hardest for something. Maybe the, the five times, you know, where you studied the hardest for something. The most, the most intensely, you were most pressured to figure something out. And how many of those times include God's Word? How many of those times includes, you know, seeking out spiritual truth? Because I remember cramming for tests, right? I remember, well, I actually didn't really study that hard in high school, so I don't remember <laughs> cramming during that time. You know, but I remember, you know, a lot of times of study, and unless, for most of you, unless you're in seminary, they probably don't include, you know, God's butt, the Word. It probably does not include the Bible. And we have spent so much of our lives studying if you're a student right now, you feel like your life is spent studying. And how much of it has included this which is supposed to be life transforming for us? Engaging and studying with scriptures is, is the mind part of you know, the greatest commandment, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Engaging in, you know, what can feel boring, what can feel kind of dry at first, right, is a way in which we express our love to God, you know, fully with our minds. In Acts 17, there's a record of, um, of Paul and Silas uh, on a missionary journey, and they go to this place, and they go to this place called Berea. And on arriving there, I'll just read the passage for you. It says this, on arriving there, I don't know if I, oh, I do have it. It says this, as soon as it was night, the believers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. On arriving there, they went to the Jewish synagogue. Now, the Berean Jews were, more no were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica. For they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. As a result, many of them believed, as did also a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. This group of people is kind of awesome and maybe a pastor's nightmare, right, because they check everything. You know, but for many of us, probably, I could just be making stuff up for the most time, and you would never know. I could be like, we're reading out of Hezekiah 1476, and you'd be like, where is that in my Bible? Right? It's not even a book, you know? And, and you know, and there's a chance, there's a, there's definitely, you know, something wrong if, if we can't, you know, be dedicated to scriptures in a way where you can't even confirm or affirm or deny, you know, what someone might come up here and preach to you. Someone might share to you. Maybe we just don't care if I'm up here lying through my teeth. But if we are serious about changing, if we're serious about this process of growth that being a Christian is, Studying scripture has to be a part. It has to be a large part of, you know, our lives. And it would be sad for me to think, right, that all of our intense study of all of our 
our lives, you know, and most of it was just for things outside of what God's word was, or outside of God's word. Never heard of anybody outside of seminary pulling all nighter just reading the Bible. <laughs> Maybe there are a few. I'm sure there are people. There's a few. Just a couple of things as we step in, and I hope you guys are starting to be a little bit more like, oh, okay, maybe I need to get into my Bible a little bit more. The process of growing in spiritual disciplines, and specifically in reading the Bible and studying it, takes resilience. Okay, it takes kind of commitment, it takes, you know, some strength, it takes, you know, a constant coming back to it, right? As I, like, go through, you know, some of these disciplines and I'm, like, studying or whatever, you know, and then I'll go through life, right? So you spend a day, you spend an hour, you say, like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to just study, I'm going to open up a notebook, I'm just going to read through the Bible, I'm going to take notes, I'm going to, you know, spend some time studying it, and then I'll go through my day, right? And then I'll go through my day, and then in the course of my day, some good things will happen, some bad things will happen, right? Over the course of my day, I will see some good stuff come out of my life, and I'll see some bad stuff come out of my life. And over that process, I'll just be like, you know, I haven't changed. I don't really, you know, maybe you won't see, like, all that much difference in yourself over a day. You know, and, and, and I believe, like, there will be voices that will tell you, like, oh, you see, look, it doesn't do anything. Right? Spending time in God's Word doesn't do anything. You know, and it takes a set of resilience. It takes commitment. It takes time. It takes discipline. Also, if studying is just meant for knowledge, then it's kind of, you know, it's, it's not really fulfilling what it's meant for. Right? Jesus said this to, to the Jews who had believed him. Jesus said this. He says, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. It's not just knowing the truth, right? But it's holding to the teachings. It is accepting it as a part of your life. It is letting it influence who you are, what you do, you know, how you act, how you talk, right? What you don't do, what you deny. So if you're just reading it just to be like, oh, okay, I know a lot about the Bible, then I don't know. It's not really going to do too much true. But, if we spend time in God's Word. We study it, and we see truth. And if we commit ourselves to hold on to it, you will find what Christ describes here as freedom. You will find what Paul describes as transformation. You will find an ability God's will. And as we learned in prayer last week, right, those who pray in, in the will of God, you know, those prayers are answered, right? It affects your prayer life. As we learned, prayer is, you know, able to change circumstances and change perspectives. will change your life, right? It brings transformation. So what do you do if you want to study the Bible? Well, I am going to encourage you to do this. Take a book. Take a small book. Start small. Start with an epistle. Start with a minor prophet. You know, Jonah is only a few chapters, Amos, you could do, you know, Philippians, Colossians, right? Some of the smaller epistles of Ephesians. Um, I'm right now going through 1 Peter. You can do 1 Peter if you want to talk about it with me. And get a notebook or a Word document and read. <laughs> First, just read it. Read the whole thing. Read it a few times. I read through 1 Peter, I could read through 1 Peter like, I don't know, seven, 
eight times within one hour, right? It's not that long, you know? If you do Jude, you could probably read it like 20 times within an hour, you know? And just read the whole thing. Read all the way through. Read it repeatedly. Get used to just reading God's Word. Do it for a week or so, reading it multiple times throughout the week, and just write down a quick summary. Alright, next as you go from there, maybe the next week, start going through the book in sections. Take paragraphs. And just write down any questions you can think of asking. Who's the author? Who's he talking to? What happened here? Why is he saying this? Who's he saying it to? What reason? What's the effect? What's it supposed to do for them? What's the cause? And then start answering. I put up one website, I, it's pretty good, uh, blueletterbible.org. I use it a lot if you're into looking up things in different languages because it, it parses out the Greek and the Hebrew for you, but it also has like commentaries on there. and just It's a good help site, right? If you ever need to do a Bible study, you know, if you ever need to just kind of um, do a search and see what it says in different translations, you know, read some commentaries, some free commentaries on it, that's a, just a good website to go to. You can probably answer most of your questions from there. Right, and at the end of it, just re-summarize the book. To put a fifth one is write down what that means for your life. And where that will, how God's truth is going to work in your life. to stop seeing spiritual disciplines as like extra credit. I feel like a lot of times that's the approach that we have to either intense study, spending time in intense prayer, meditation, fasting, all of these different disciplines, giving, confession. We need to stop thinking of these as like spiritual extra credits. And what I'm hoping is that not just that you know, through these sermon series that everybody's going to be like, oh, okay, I'll try that one more time, or I'll try that another time. But I actually hope that your perception of who you are as a Christian changes. Right? Where that you can start to see yourselves like, hey, I want to be a man or a woman of God's word. Hey, part of my identity that I'm moving towards is to become a man or a woman of prayer. Right? The, who I am as a Christian is going to lead me into a person that is regularly meditating on who God is. It's not just, I don't want to just encourage you guys to just try something new and see if that will bring, you know, like a, a good feeling to you. Right? But this, this should be shaping your identity as a believer. Because as believers, we are called to cooperate, to be with Christ. To abide in him and him in us so that we might bear good fruit. These spiritual disciplines, these are the things that, you know, specifically biblically have been laid out for us to engage in so that we can cooperate with what God is doing. So our identity, you know, if we just think like, oh, people who study the Bible a lot, that's only people in seminary. And people who pray a lot, those are just those special few. Or people who fast, those are just kind of like the really extreme Christians. But that's not the point, right? The point is to start thinking like, whoa, maybe this is where God is calling me. That I will be a man or a woman. I will be a man or a woman that goes deep into God's word and studies as a regular part of my life. That I will meditate, that I fast, that I give, that I confess my sins, right? That I, you know, 
live simply. There's so many different um, disciplines that we can engage in. It's just we need to change our mind about who we are as Christians and what that means for our lives. We need to, there's no such thing as nominal just go to church on Sundays. You just, there's no just Christian. Right? But being a Christian is a progression of further and further intimacy with Christ. And these are the things that we can do to, to allow us to get there. We're going to enter into a time of communion. I pray that you can just reflect on that. I hope you're encouraged. I hope you crack open your Bibles this week and, you know, just get into it. Uh, but we're going to enter into a time of communion right now. Um, communion is a time where, where we remember just the goodness of Christ and what he gave to us that even enables us to engage in this new life. And I just want to encourage us to take communion seriously as a real time to really reflect on Jesus. Let me read from 1 Corinthians 11. It's a teaching on how to take communion. And it says this, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks of the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread or drink. Communion is a time to seriously reflect, to seriously remember who Christ is, the fact that he gave his body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins, and that taking in communion is one participation in what Christ has done in his sacrifice, in his death, and it is thankfulness. how he has saved us and the gift that he gave, the gift of salvation. So we're going to enter into this time of communion. I'm going to pray for us, and I just ask that you take some time to reflect. Really think about Jesus. Remember, that will make communion what it is meant to be. right now and, and just think upon you, Lord. Um, we want to think on your sacrifice. We want to think on how you gave up your body, Lord, and how your blood was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. For a new life that we could have in you, Lord. A life that is now to be led by your Spirit. So I just pray, Father God, just as we think and as we reflect, Lord, we would be filled with just, uh, thankfulness, maybe some conviction, maybe, I don't know, whatever it is that you want to say to us individually, Lord. But Father, as we approach your table then, after we reflect, Lord, that we would be able to come, Lord, and enjoy and peace that you are